You know what I like about Sea of Thieves? Gunpowder barrels. I mean seriously, why would I want to sail around in circles trying to defeat somebody in naval combat just for them to run from me anyway, when I could instead sneak up on them with a rowy and a boom keg? Listen, it's called Sea of Thieves, not Sea of Ships, meaning however you go about doing your thieving, as long as you get it done, it's good enough. And is there a better way to get the job done than by using the equivalent of a Modern Warfare 2 tactical nuke? That's right my friends, I'm talking about an Athena keg. But how does one go about acquiring such a legendary weapon? Well, there's more than one way to ensure you can get your grubby hands on it, but every single one of them takes a considerable amount of time. Our journey began with me plopping down in Athena's run of Thieves Haven, fully intending to utilize that voyage in order to get my keg. But when I was taking a gander at the map to give us a direction, I just so happened to see an opportunity. Which is where? As a Reaper 3 at Thieves Haven. Very cool. If there's one thing I learned during our last episode, it's that sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. That Reaper emissary being right around our destination must have been a sign. Rare made an attempt to lead my hand and this time I intended to listen. Okay, I mean Rare also decided to throw Karen at us, so I'm not too sure what they're trying to tell me. But instead of just going to Thieves Haven to do our voyage in hopes of getting an Athena keg, we decided to set up a trap for the Reapers first. A few regular kegs would have to do for the start, we decided to go to the inactive fort of the Damned because it usually has a bunch of kegs laying around. And since it isn't too far away from the Reapers hideout, we could deliver them very quickly. Now, you really want to be careful when unloading kegs from your ship. I always say that the best place for these things is on an enemy vessel, but when you do happen to try and set up traps like we do, make sure you handle them with the respect they demand, because if you don't... Why is my keg exploding? Why can't I turn it off? Okay. That was fun. If you thought that was bad, then just you wait until you hear the conversation that followed. Okay, well I didn't know that. I never what? turned them you on. You didn't know that right click turns off the keg? I never turned them on. If that's any indication for how our day was gonna go, then I'm not looking forward to the rest of it. But alas, Birdie made up for his mistake by delivering a new batch of gunpowder with about as much care as your average UPS driver. At that point, all we could do was wait for the Reapers to come to the hideout, with them having been just shy of rank 5 when we last had seen them, and this being the only place they can sell their loot at, we were not expecting to have to wait long. And boy, were we ever wrong about that. Every time we thought they were finally coming back to sell, they instead decided to go for yet another world event. And let's just say that they weren't the fastest crew in the west. While Brandon and I were holding down the hideout, Birdie was looking for a rowboat so he could park the ship a ways away from here with him not having to swim the entire distance back. But after about an hour of sitting around doing nothing, with Birdie still not having found a rowboat, the Reaper sloop began heading towards our brigantine. Of course, we immediately returned just in case they were gonna try something funny, but it was just as we had expected. These guys guys were PvE Reapers with no intention of engaging in PvP, instead telling us to go away. And well, we were more than happy to oblige, for now. If these guys did not want to come to our trap, then we would simply have to bring our trap to them. No doubt they would be distracted clearing the skull fort they headed towards, so once we had found a rowie, we could begin Operation Keg Delivery. We left our ship at Sanctuary Outpost to make it look like we were selling loot, while in actuality we made our way over to the skull fort on a rowboat filled with gunpowder. As soon as we got close enough, Brandon and I jumped off the rowie with kegs in hand, Birdie would try to deliver the uh, remaining explosives, but we knew that if they spotted us from afar, a single shot would be enough to take all three of us out. But even with all of that contingency in mind, things didn't go as expected. I'm almost here, I don't know if he saw me. I'm, I'm barrel fucking right now. Whew. He respawned, he went back, he went to uh, I, 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 the island. I, 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 oh, they found me. He found me, he found me. I'm dead. Right. Blowing. blowing the ship, blowing the ship, blowing the ship. Can you get me, Cliff? Uh, I'll, I'll try. I'm basically gone at this point. Oh, yeah. So close. Dang it. I'm dead because I forgot to bring him. <laughs> All right, oh, I'll bring no, the they saw us. Let this be a lesson, everybody. Greed gets you killed. We had every opportunity to just blow up their ship and then stole them on the island as it was sinking. But because we wanted them to finish the event first, we gave them a chance to spot us before that happened. Had we just stuck to the plan, all of their loot would have been ours. But instead, we now had to deal with the song and dance of a running reaper. Listen, I could sit here and craft some sort of epic narrative about us gaining on them inch by inch as we repelled every single of their boarding attempts. But because this is Sea of Thieves, no running reaper scenario will 
will be complete without a hefty dose of toxicity. They told us, um, keep yourself safe, and because they really wanted to make sure we knew they were absolute degenerates, they also made a bunch of noises that would absolutely get me kicked off YouTube were I to play them right now. All in all, I would rate this encounter, I hope their mom takes their internet away out of 10. But about 15 minutes into this chase, I started to realize, what am I even doing here? We literally have a boatload of kegs waiting at Reaper's hideout, why do we bother chasing these idiots? So we turned away towards the hideout, well knowing there was our best chance at catching them. Unfortunately, there seems to be some sort of correlation between how incompetent and how paranoid a pirate is, because these guys cased the entire hideout before trying to sell. At the end, we held it down for another 30 minutes and change until we eventually realized that these losers dropped off their emissary flag and went to sell the loot for peanuts at an outpost instead of claiming the reaper bonus. I feel like nobody came out truly victorious in that exchange, but more than anything else, this had proven to me that stealth was the way to go. We were not gonna make the same mistake again. Before our session was over, we will have gunpowdered our way into a fortune, and if it's the last dang thing that I do. So about the Athena keg, to get one of these, the easiest way I know of will be by completing a Legend of the Veil vale Voyage, which will get your Emissary Flag to rank 5, granting you an Emissary Voyage, which then seems to have a good chance of spawning one such gunpowder keg. But there are a few problems. Emissary Flags by default put a massive target on your back, and the Legend of the Veil vale literally summons a tornado into the world, meaning it's anything but stealthy. The Athena's Run of Thieves Haven Voyage instead requires neither an Emissary Flag nor does it summon a world event, but it does not guarantee TA keg at the end of the tunnel. Either way, if stealth was the name of the game, then our choice was obvious, but trust me when I say that, it was anything but fast. The voyage kept setting us away from and then back to the island of Thieves Haven, completing a bunch of tasks along the way. Every single regular skeleton that we fought felt like it had the health pool of a mini boss, and the loot we gained along the way truly was representative of day one Sea of Thieves. Knowing that this approach was pure RNG anyway, we stopped by a few islands to kill some skelly captains in hopes of getting at least a a regular stronghold gunpowder keg off their map. And well, let's just say that Rare seemingly approved of our plan. Oh, yes, oh, that's what I want to see. The game had bestowed upon us what I would graciously describe as a solid plan B. So as we continued on our voyage, we could rest assured knowing that at least some sort of shenanigans would take place. But let's not forget, rare giveth, but rare also taketh away. Since we had more than one case of accidental keg detonation via sword dash in our crew, I decided to keep the keg in the crow's nest for the time being. And of course, that's when a storm decided to come right towards Thieves Haven. A single lightning strike could ignite the keg and blow all of us up, but I mean, it's not like that's super likely to happen right anything, right? Oh my god. You have not experienced true terror until you sail through a storm with a keg on your crow's nest. Birdie brought the darn thing downstairs for safekeeping, and let's just say that this ended up being a very good decision. <gasps> that would have been the end of Oh, oh my <laughs> god. So remember when you were like, hey, Birdie, move that keg below that. Yeah. <laughs> Every blessing comes with its curses, but we successfully set out the storm without igniting the keg. We continued with our voyage, hoping to finally dig up a tactical nuke, but little did we know that the delivery method the game chose was defy our expectations. Instead of trying to find the keg, it had found us. We had to be careful, keep our distance so the skelly does not blow us up, while only shooting its feet so that we don't blow ourselves up. Once we had claimed our prize, the real challenge could finally begin, using this bad boy to either extort loot out of somebody or sink them to claim it as our own. At that point, we were left to make a decision. Do we camp an outpost in hopes of ambushing an oblivious crew trying to sell, or do we take the rowboat to seek out a target ourselves? Truthfully, we were kinda tired of setting around waiting for loot to come our way, but we were also aware of how dangerous it would be to try and approach another crew with an Athena keg in hands. At the end, we decided that we had spent enough time waiting. If we wanted to walk away with a fortune, we could not rely on fate alone. Armed to the teeth, Birdie, Brandon, and I rode over to a close-by island currently occupied by a gold hoarder. Our approach was not very hidden, but the owners did not appear to be on board of their ship, giving us a golden opportunity. The keg was locked as well as loaded and ready to detonate at any point, which which meant it was time to find the owners to begin negotiating. Hey, hey, stop fires. I wouldn't kill me if I were you. Yo, hey, I have an Athena keg on your ship right now, and if you don't do exactly what I tell you, it, I'm gonna blow it up. <laughs> He's running toward the ship. <laughs> <laughs> stop or I'll blow up the keg. Stop or I'm clip blow it. He's not listening. Sir, do you see what I have in my hand, sir? You did sir? this to yourself. Oh, oh, I you died. did this to yourselves. Blow it, blow it, blow it. You did this to yourself. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You're not, you're not saving that ship anymore. Got him. He's we dead. gave you a choice, sir. We gave you a choice. 
I really wish I could have gotten a nice shot of the Athena colored explosion engulfing their entire vessel, but with their unwillingness to negotiate, saving Birdie before he meets the same fate as Brandon did kind of take precedence. Impressively, the rowboat barely survived the explosion, allowing us to load up all of their treasure for a smooth getaway, one which even a backspawn two minutes later would have absolutely no way of stopping. At the end of the day, it took a lot of trial and error as well as a ton of preparation, but we achieved exactly what we sought out to do. Through the power of an Athena keg, we successfully heisted our way into a fortune. But if you want to watch even more robo shenanigans, then what about you check out my episode titled The Only Boat You Need in Sea of Thieves. Brandon and I decided to try and spend an entire day on a rowie, the card to which you can find on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with the riches on the sea and until next time, peace.